People are starting to think more about how their daily decisions have an impact on climate change. They're making lifestyle changes like driving EVs, shopping locally, and even figuring out their own carbon footprint. But here's the thing, many people don't realize that buildings contribute to climate change too. In cities like Vancouver and Victoria, buildings generate over half the city's emissions. The problem is that we burn fossil fuels to heat buildings and to heat up the water. And most buildings are pretty bad at managing temperatures. Which means that we crank up the AC in the summer and we blast the heat in the winter. Are you allowed to touch the thermostat at your mom's house? No. Now, you may have heard of something called the BC Energy Step Code. It came into effect in late 2017 and includes five levels or steps of energy efficiency for homes. The top step is almost equivalent to the passive house standard out of Germany. To achieve the top step, you have to have a really well insulated and airtight building envelope, including really good windows. As of May 1st, 2023, all new homes in BC must meet at least step three of the BC Energy Step Code. By 2032, they're all going to have to meet step five. That's a big deal, and it's forcing the building community and homeowners to get up to speed on how to build better homes. Some are totally in the dark about what it takes to get to step five. I'm talking to homeowners and professionals from the building industry that were part of Zebax's Near Zero program to get the lowdown on the benefits and challenges of going all in on energy efficiency. I'm Marisa Detata. This is my husband, David Masulo. Uh, we had intentions to buy, or rather to build, a conventional home in East Vancouver. Uh, we happened to come upon a property in the area that was building a new home. It, it didn't look like any other build that we've seen before. It was using ICF forms, not just for the foundation, it was using it for the walls. The, the owner builder um, happened to be there and, and, and we just struck up a conversation and, and just try to describe it uh, uh, basically as a very, very well insulated home. The comfort, the air quality, the cost efficiency, those sorts of things were intriguing. Hello, I'm John Baldwin. Now this is my home. I love the outdoors. I spent years going in the mountains here. I've seen glaciers that have receded 10 kilometers in my lifetime. A house is, is a big contributor to climate change, the energy that it takes to, to run it and heat it, and I wanted to see what we could do. A Step 5 home uses significantly less energy than a typical home. In fact, if you add solar panels to some of these homes, they will produce enough energy to offset the amount of energy they consume over the course of a year. But if you really want to reduce a home's carbon footprint in BC, just make it all electric. Connecting to BC Hydro's very low carbon electricity grid is the most effective way to achieve real near zero emissions for a home. There's been uh, a great deal of modeling that's been done in terms of um, where of carbon intensity of, of the built space. Mining and refining various building materials, as well as once the home has been built, what does it take to uh, continue to heat? Running a house 40 years is, the, the amount of CO2 is enormous. Um, you're not gonna make up for it by recycling your, your plastic bags. The hope is that this becomes mainstream but there's skepticism. We should be building more Step 5 homes. I think we want to get there as a, as a society. Uh, my advice, though, is to be aware that uh, you are an early adopter at this stage of this type of home. There's some aspirational element to this project. My name's Ranj Gill. I'm the owner of Monolith Design Build. Didn't initially have an interest in building high efficiency uh, right off the get-go, but the more research I did, uh, the more it made sense, kind of culminating with this one uh, being a step five house. This is also my personal house, so it's uh, made it a bit easier to make all the decisions to do it. When you're net zero, you're creating as much energy as you're using. Obviously, you have to look at what your usage is going to be from your mechanical equipment and your appliances and everything else. But air tightness is our primary focus. Air tightness is a measure of how much air leaks through the building envelope. 
A building with good air tightness has very little air leakage, which helps to reduce energy consumption, improve the indoor air quality, and make it more comfortable even right next to the windows. Air tightness is typically measured using a blower door test, which involves installing a special fan in an exterior door frame and depressurizing the building. The fan creates a pressure differential that allows air leakage to be detected and quantified. Results of the blower door test are reported as the air leakage rate for homes. This is typically measured in air changes per hour to meet the air tightness requirements of a Step 5 home. The air leakage rate must be less than or equal to one air change per hour when the home is pressurized or depressurized to 50 pascals. Achieving this level of air tightness requires careful design and attention to detail during construction and the use of high quality air sealing materials and techniques. Maybe put a little dab of clear silicone in the corner and that will fix the problem. To avoid surprises at the end of construction, many builders test a home as soon as the air barrier and windows are installed. Some of the things that we do is we are sealing the exterior sheathing uh, with tapes. Typically, windows and doors traditionally are done with rod and caulk, but there's always some amount of shrinkage that happens. Then we're taping the Tyvek. So we're trying to build layers and layers for that airflow to slow down. On a house like this, we use mock-ups. Hi, my name is Matt. I'm here with uh, Meridian Pacific Construction. Today we'll be doing a wall assembly for a step five in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. Having a mock-up on site, where you're able to actually physically put items together. You can show not only the homeowners, the clients, um, all the stakeholders that are involved. Um, you can walk through and you can amend and adjust details um, as required in order to create the most robust detail um, for the project. So when you look at the, the door, um, there's one, two and three different uh, weather strippings. These rubber seals are very soft and they, they hit the vinyl uh, really tightly. So an interesting detail that we uh, ended up using here, we've installed a very robust uh, sheet of plywood that's taped to act as our air barrier. And then for our electrical considerations, we furred it down with a uh, two by three on edge which will essentially give us a two and a half to three inch cavity. There's no risk of damaging that very sacred air barrier. Many in the building industry and most homeowners think that high performance homes are all about how they're designed and built. But it goes beyond that. If you want to ensure smooth sailing through the design and construction phases of a high performance home and keep costs under control, you need to get the right project team around the table very early in the design process. You're going to have to um, speak to the team that, you've, that you're working with and select the team who are familiar, intimately familiar, with uh, these building materials and this building type. Ideally, someone who's done it before. Hi, my name's Rob Pope. I'm with Ecolite and Energy Solutions. Uh, we worked on the mechanical systems design and the uh, uh, EA piece, the um, energy modeling. Yeah, so how we achieve hitting uh, the sweet spot for all those targets was a process we call integrated design, which just is a fancy way of saying we get together and coordinate. Hi, my name is Jamie Dobson. I'm with Live Simply Design. For our process, we were trying to um, hold more meetings so that we were all present. It was just far superior than just kind of working with consultants individually. When you look at the ducting, all you're going to see it's ducting. You know, it looks good. It's really nice looking ducting. But what you won't see is how many times we back and forth to figure it out. The building envelope consultant, structural engineer, and HVAC, all of us had to come together, and the contractor trying to figure out the sequence of, of what had to happen in, in order to have our continuous envelope membranes, and then also just figuring out structurally, HVAC-wise, how we could actually make it work. Figuring out what kind of building assembly details we need, level of insulation, air tightness, windows for example you know what um, the other component of that was the mechanical systems so basically it was all the key players including the homeowner of course and understanding when the house is finished the aesthetic is still intact I love it because each of the team members is really passionate about what they're doing they're coming to the table with a really positive attitude and they're coming with the approach that they want to collaborate 
By being early adopters of high-performance homes, many homeowners in the Zebex Near Zero program face financial challenges. Some of these were related to pandemic-induced supply chain issues, the ongoing shortage of skilled trades, and the building industry that was just getting acquainted with high-performance design and construction. You know, we feel very privileged to be able to build a home in Vancouver. It's very expensive. The decision to move to step five and the cost that ultimately um, you know, caught us by, by surprise. Some things are more, obviously windows are more, but then we save a lot. We don't have ducting, we don't have furnace, so we can save on things like that. And then on the long term, we have no energy costs. I left two 5,000 watt heaters on in this house with no insulation over the Christmas break, and I came back and it was 23 degrees inside. I can pull out a hydro bill and show them that, okay, I'm only paying 550 bucks for the year instead of three or 400 bucks a month. People are gonna look and they're gonna say, if there's a house for sale that's step five and a house that's old, they're gonna pick the step five house. If we're able to build these more sustainable homes that have lower operating costs and lower energy demands, that we're actually doing a bigger and better part for the community around us and the, com the global community as a whole. This will be a standard house in, in 10 years. Every house will have to be built like this. Lead the clients and they can say, yeah, but we can do this. It's not gonna be that much more expensive. Because the high performance stuff was where you get to use your brains, you get to use your skills to the edge of the, your, you know, your, your capabilities. And you, when you walk away from the project, you feel good. A higher performance home can be more comfortable. They're not drafty, they're warm. Um, they will withstand changes to the weather. Um, so I think for the long term they're going to be much, much more comfortable. Unlike this house, which is 100, 111 years old, we, we have to sleep in the basement you know, during really severe weather events. So I think that there's a lot of reasons. The sort of extra uh, effort that's required to do so at this particular time is worth it. it it's all worth it in the end. If you're a homeowner that wants to learn more about climate friendly and energy efficient homes, or if you're in the building industry and want to get up to speed on how to design and build them, visit zebex.org to check out all their resources. Thanks for watching. This video is funded by Clean BC and brought to you by Zebex, the Zero Emissions Building Exchange, part of the Zero Emissions Innovation Centre.